So, Amber, what do you think about bubbles with the garden? I think that if they pop, the soap would get on the plants. But if you use a special bubble that you can use to stick onto your hands, they won't pop unless if they get into water or if you don't put them right on time. Because I had those bubbles before and you have to wait a few seconds before you can touch them. But if bubbles aren't them. If the bubbles pop and get on your plants, what does that do to your plants? It could kill them. No. Only if they're thick and they can't photo photosynthesize. Soapy water, aka bubbles, actually stop the bugs from eating your plants. Really? You always told me don't blow the bubbles at them. That's because my plants are in the house and it doesn't rain on them. So that soap leaves a residue and they don't photosynthesize as well. No, when we used to live at grandma's. Oh, because I didn't want you running in the garden. You told me that when I'm barefoot that I could go in the garden and plant stuff. So basically I would do the same thing, I'll plant bubbles. Okay, and what do you think of that blue thing around your tomato plant? I think that it actually helps because my grandma used to do this. My great grandma, my mom's great, just grandma, she used to have metal ones and they used to be um, over the place. And this used to be a farm, so they used to have plants and stuff here too. Do you want to walk your uh, friends around and show them where the garden used to be here on the farm? I'll tell them a little bit about stuff. So I don't know if you could see the, t the oak tree. But there's one there. But there's an oak tree there. Or you might just see a bunch of greenery. Now this property used to be nine acres. It's only three now. And that is one of the wells that's no longer in use underneath that shrubbery. And over here is an abandoned well. Tree. However, this is the oak tree. Is the oak tree. Isn't that the one that Grandpa Pa grew? There's two of them here. There's that one. And then, and then there's that one. Mine. And this is where the farm garden began. We keep on walking. We can show you a little bit where the chicken coop used to be. A little, and it went up that little bit of a hill right there. Well, there used to be a lot more room over here. So, um, when my grandma was little, she would go on the vines and swing on them. The chicken coop used to be up here. And in between the two oak trees was the shed for the garden. All that's left is the uh, foundation. And the hole. And... But the garden used to go all the way back to the camper. And just past the camper is the remainders of the barn. But all this... And a little bit more over this way, Mom. A little bit past the yonder of the river. Used to be the garden. And just past the garden where the barn was is where the cow was. And the chicken coop was up yonder, up the hill. But let's go back and play with the bubbles some more. One last thing. If you ever come to our property, never go down all the way down there. Ticks, spiders, and a <laughs> big bat pond with snapping turtles. Oh yeah, you have to be careful because there's poison ivy here too. <laughs> poison ivy? Yeah. Poison oak, poison ivy. Next year's garden. Ember, I was thinking next year's garden, this hill could be our pumpkin patch. Yes, but digging to plant the pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, but where else would me and Anna run besides over there? <laughs> I was thinking we could plant the pumpkins in that no. little dead spot of grass there. Here? This is our main spot where we can look for our arrowheads. Yeah, but when we dig to plant them, well, we could see if they're there or not. 
What? you see all these rocks that's what me and my cousin from our ladybug one tanner if you guys didn't watch it we had a we have a ladybug video we released uh, at least 106 ladybugs i believe well i think we released closer to a thousand yeah so we dug up all these rocks and we have a bucket of them big rocks small rocks i'm the one who started them mom would you like to tell the story about how your dog Found an I had a dog named Daphne and there was a tree over by that pine tree that's no longer there and she had a cable that ran all the way over to this tree here <clears throat> and she would run back and forth on this hill and she ripped all the grass up and she started kicking the dirt up and she was unearthing arrowheads so this is where we tell the kids to go dig to look for them for like rocks like um, like this. This could have been an arrowhead, but it could have gotten sanded down Maybe. and got layered on after a while. Yeah, but I'm thinking we plant the pumpkins where your sister is, mm -hmm. okay? And then over here, we plant the watermelons. I think Maybe. Right about here. And then we just let the vines grow into the middle here and you could still dig for your arrowheads but what I would like to do I would like to you know how there's corn mazes hedge mages you want to make a maze basically but with sunflowers we could do that too because I was thinking about putting the sunflowers along the back I was thinking of like a pumpkin kind of way for the outside of the wall so if you need to take a break you could just sit down, plop on that pumpkin, especially in autumn. Yeah, but with the pumpkins and the watermelons, we don't really need to weed around them. Just where they go into the ground and they could go in and out of the grass. And also next year, sweetie, we're going to dig up one of these beautiful blackberry bushes over here. That our, our great grandmother. That my great grandmother planted. And we're going to bring it closer to the garden so we could actually harvest the blackberries instead of having the birds eat them. And then I was thinking until I realized that this is shady all morning about in here taking out all this grass and planting the stuff like lettuce and spinach and the turnips and radishes. Hold on, and in front of the garden here, this little grassy spot, I was thinking about putting all the carrots and putting the corn up along the house until the back of the garden, I was gonna do the sweet potatoes. Mom, you're missing a few things. Our rutabagas are cucumbers. I don't, think, I don't think we got rutabagas or cucumbers yet. We need to. But they're viney stuff. They're vines. I could put a trellis up along the back and put all the vines. So, I don't know. Do you think we should take a chance with this partial shade in the morning and plant stuff here? Well, we could trim the tree, but that could cause damage to the house and stuff like but that. But look at the size of the tree that we would have to trim. Well, yeah. But we're only going to need to trim a few branches from over here, and then some of the branches right over here on this pine tree. So but I'd need Grandpa Pa's permission to trim the tree. Or, or, if you really wanna get permission, Uncle Francis. <laughs> well, Uncle Francis and Grandpa own the property together. I so know. we could also come over here where that sunny spot is and plant stuff there. But that's my spot, Mommy. You see that swing? I'm the one who also plays with it. <laughs> Mom, look at Anna. I know, I know. She's all covered in dirt. One, two, three. Now, underneath that window you're by? This one? Yep. We're going to plant some flowers that smell pretty. They're not going to be like vegetables. We're planting flowers. We're going to get some lily of the valley because it smells pretty in the spring. 
And then we need to get something that'll smell pretty during the summer to plant down there too. Roses? Roses. Ooh. Roses Sorry, I had a skeeter eating me and dropped the phone. Um, something small because there's not that much ground there because they put a drain with rocks to drain the water out into the driveway. How about some posies? Pansies don't smell. Posies. We need something that smells purdy. Yeah. Because Poppy asked us to plant something that smells purdy. Poppies. Poppies don't Skeeter. have a smell. Skeeter. Okay. We just need something that smells purdy. Maybe like lilies, but lilies are too big. Those are springtime flowers. Get your sister out of the tall grass. She's got the poison ivy. Hi, hi. No, no, I went through and I pulled all the poison ivy in that area. That's just Virginia creeper right now. That's not going to do anything to her. Anna, come here. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I pulled all the Virginia creeper down off of the house, too. Hello, hello. Okay. So let's go back to playing bubbles, okay? So, do you think that where we have our garden this year, we should just do, like, peppers and tomatoes? Um, you know how Grandma has her pond mm -hmm. that everybody that is not a great fell into, but in the back, how there's flowers? What are those flowers' names? Irises. Why don't we do them? You just planted a bunch of them. Okay, we'll figure out what we're going to plant there. We need something that will attract the pollinators and something that smells pretty because when that window is open, the way the breeze blows, it just fills the house. So. But roses, roses, we need roses, Mommy. Anywho, <laughs> up against, look at, up against the back of the house here, right here where the window's not, we're going to plant the sweet potatoes. And over by the window, I was thinking either the cucumbers or the squash. Okay. And then in front of it, putting the actual potatoes, I was hoping to get red Yukon gold and some purple majesty potatoes. And then in front of the potatoes, put the tomatoes. And in front of the tomatoes, put the peppers. And then... And then I was thinking about doing carrots. And turnips. And radishes or parsnips here. You know, the root crops. And then I could do the corn over here by that window. Or I could do the corn here in the partial shade, but I don't know how that would work. And then we'll put our melons up on the hill. What do you say to that? Does that sound like a good idea? We need to get this mud off of her, Mom. Okay, get the mud off of her. Bring her in the sprinkler. What are ladybugs like this, Mommy? Tie-dye wet, like in a sprinkler. It just makes a really cool color. Yeah, it does. And then you see all these little hanging basket contraptions? Yeah. I was thinking all the strawberries we have, we could put in baskets and just hang them all around the garden. Basically, like how um, our white strawberries are? Yeah, but I was thinking about moving those white strawberries into this container here. So this container is all white strawberries. What container? My strawberry planter with your grapes. Yeah, but what, what, where, where, where are we going to put my grapes? Your grapes are going to stay there. The strawberries don't have deep roots. What about my blackberries? My blueberries? <laughs> my strawberries? Well, not my strawberries. Again, we're going to move a blackberry bush over here. And we're going to grow a whole bunch of blackberries from seeds. We're going to find room. I'm trying to figure out where to put the vegetables. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kamehameha. Yeah. <laughs> but no, what do you think? It's okay, but... 
How does it sound okay, but? It's not all going to be garden, garden, garden. If I'm only doing the corn in front of the window over here, it's only going to come out to where the su halfway to where the, the sun ends. Mommy, look at my power. <laughs> so, are you are you helping me here with my thought process or are you just playing with the bubbles? Ah. Ah. Me. Ah. <laughs> You've been watching too much DBZ. Well, it was because of you. I know, it's my favorite too. Um, Man, tai tai. But no, honestly, Amber, can you answer my question now? Do you think we keep this area? Yeah. <laughs> now, do you want to try and grow corn in partial shade, or do you want to keep it in the full sun by the window? Um, a little bit over here, a little bit over there. So you want to do a little here and a little there to see the difference between partial shade and full sun? Yeah, but our regular corn, not our glass Indian corn. Our well, glass Indian corn is going to be in our maze. And well, we... Stop her! We only... Stop her! You stop her! You're closer. She just poured more bubbles in. She didn't make a mess. She didn't spill any. Yeah, sure she did. She spilled some getting it up, and now she's getting the critter food. It's called peanut food. No, that, that's critter food for the turkey. <laughs> and rabbits. Anyways, where are we doing our corn maze? Our corn maze is going to be over here, but it's not just going to be corn. It's going to be sunflowers, pumpkins, watermelons. Well, I wanted to keep the glass Indian corn in the fenced-in area so the animals don't eat it. Anna. Now, this is most likely going to be the last video that I make, edit, and post from my phone. I received a gift today, and I want to show you what the gift is. I'm trying to do this all one-handed here. Now the gift was something totally unexpected, and inside I have a battery charger as well as the cable that goes to the battery charger. I have a data cable. Wormies! I have a second worm, worm, worm. battery. Worm, get back here, worm. And I have a case. Worm. <laughs> Mommy, look at the worm. Oh boy, look at that worm. He was under my bucket that I told you guys about. Oh boy. I'm trying to empty it out and make some mud in the yard. Okay. Put you in the water. Now in the case is this. My very first video camera. Now I don't have a SD card yet. But the quality is amazing. So I'm going to need to get a tripod for it and possibly a wireless microphone, depending on how the audio is. But for now, hopefully it'll be much better than the videos I can produce on my phone. And I also may be able to get a much, much better video editor on my computer. Looking at it, it's compatible with my computer. Let's see here. It does not say what kind of SD card it takes but it does say that it has no built-in memory. So, we'll keep you up to date on how this works out. And I'll be sure to let you know when I'm using this, finally. What are you two doing? Digging up dirt so we can make mud. Why are you making mud? Because it feels squishy on your feet. 
just because I'm nine doesn't mean I get to talk like this. <laughs> and we want to make mud bubbles. Mud bubbles? Yeah. What are mud bubbles? That's where you get soap, water, and dirt. And then you shake it up, and then your bubbles look like it's kind of like poop, but it's not. It's cool. <laughs> Me and Keegan did that before. Well, at least you're outside having fun. With all of today's modern technology, it's good to see children outside in the sun running around and having fun and not glued to a tablet or a television yeah, or a cell phone. I'm actually a little bit happy that my mom took my tablet away from me and we're not going to say anything else besides this, but I did something, she took it away, and I'm happy that she did. I'm also a little bit sad that I can't watch our videos, but hey, at least I'm able to do this. Come on, Anna. Now this is one of my most favorite ways to get rid of bugs. I'm gonna see if I could get Ember to dump this since the sprinkler is on. You wanna go in the garden and put it on the cabbage? We've got something eating the cabbage, so we're gonna eating put- my cabbage. Don't take it away from her. Open the garden up and let her in and help her. Anna, the cabbage, over I here. I how to open it. Just pull the bricks off. No, not the potatoes. Well, she's not on the cabbage, but she's got the right idea. She's over at the potatoes. Ember's opening up the garden. I'm going to get a different bucket of soapy water for this, and I will be back. This is one of my favorite ways to get rid of bugs that eat plants in the garden. Yeah, poopy stuff. This is just a simple solution of soapy water and, yeah, <laughs> just soap and water. Especially when you can wash your child. And now some dirt because of the dirty hands, but dirt don't hurt. Yeah, no. I got my dirt so dirt won't hurt. So, so Ember's gonna take this bucket directly into the garden and dump it on the cabbage. all over the cabbage, trying to get the entire cabbage coated in the soapy water. Okay. So, yeah. Let her play with the bubbles. Set it in the water though so she can get the soap off of her while she plays with it. And for all you out there saying, oh, why are you letting your daughter get covered in mud? Blah, blah, blah. Well, exposure to germs helps build the body's immune system to it. It's only dirt and it will wash off. And she's a kid, so let her splash in the mud and have fun. And they're playing with the sprinkler, trying to fill the water up with some more. And when you don't want to turn your hose off, but you have to fix your fence and your garden and you're watering it, Depending on the type of sprinkler you have, all you have to do is put a kitchen pan over it. But that also directs the water down to where the kids are playing, so now they won't take it off. They're just <laughs> filling up their containers. Anna, what are you doing? Anna, what are you doing? Don't drink the water, that's yucky. 
What do you do when you're two years old and it's a hot day? You play in a puddle with your sister with a hose. I found the culprits that are eating the cabbage. And they've less left quite a nest of eggs. Now this is pretty sad that I chopped the top off of the cabbage to get rid of the pests that are eating it. And they're going to be composted in the permaculture bin where they can't come out and get this. But um, hopefully this will grow up from this.